Hello, welcome back to our discussion on management decision tools. In this segment, we will focus our discussion on integer and binary linear programming model, where the solutions right, will be required, we insist, uh, to be integer or binary. Now, why would that be useful? Now, there are many business day-to-day uh, -day situations in which we find ourselves desiring, in fact, needing the solutions to be integer. For example, we might want to deploy integer number of workers, uh, discrete number of containers, boxes of raw materials, um, integer number of offices, venues, yes, um, deploy discrete number of teams, right? It's either five teams or six teams and it would never be one five point one five teams. Now, you might say, well, okay, fine, but there are quantities like time and money where they are kind of modeled in a continuous way and it is, uh, uh, why would then it be necessary for us to talk about integer? Now, because of business practices and uh, the way we work uh, almost internationally, we tend to uh, for to facilitate communications, we tend to round things up to the nearest uh, suitable units like tens of thousands or millions. You know? So, for example, if we are seeking management approval for budget, we might ask for uh, $200,000 or $300,000. We wouldn't try to ask for $265,025 uh, and 65 cents, right? So, uh, because of, of communication, um, you know, eti uh, etiquettes and uh, the way we work, we tend to round things up and that would lead to a need for integer solutions. Yeah, so um, let's say we want to deploy the workers for to work for certain hours. Now, because of employment practices, we might ask them to work for five hours, or six hours and it wouldn't be 5.23 hours even if 5.23 hours happens to be the optimal uh, working hour for your project yeah so does it mean that we should then find the optimal solution 5.23 and then kind of like okay why don't we just round it to five so please work for five hours does it make sense we need uh, some sort of justification for that and although it seems like the obvious thing to do uh, is it mathematically sound and correct? So those will be the uh, parts where we look at initially, and then we look at how we use Excel and also uh, typical application areas to solve problems like these. Uh, as another extreme, uh, to bring this further, uh, we will find ourselves in situations where we not only want integer solutions, but binary solutions where it is only zero or one that we are talking about. And that often leads to the places where we are deciding whether we should uh, invest that's one project or not invest and that's zero project. So although it's quantity, zero, we invest in zero project versus we invest in one project, it is binary. Do or don't, yes or no, go or don't go, work or don't work. Yeah, so those will be the situations where we make decisions and they are, they are very frequent encountered and they are binary in nature all right so in such cases it is obvious that we do not seek an answer where it is 0 0.33 quantity of doing <laughs> or investing in the stock uh, what does that mean yeah so uh, we will take a glance and appreciate why such a solutioning process is difficult mathematically uh, and in terms of interpretation right so we'll, we'll borrow, make use of a bit of graphics to understand uh, the nature of it, but we are not going to use a uh, graphical method to solve anything. We're just trying to understand the, the difficult nature of uh, such types of problems, and that's it. Okay, So that's the first uh, section of what we will discuss. Then another part of uh, this session's agenda is to uh, look at, by way of applications, understand how we might be able to appreciate such situations and then turn them into a relevant uh, integer or binary programming model. And from there on, of course, it becomes easier to solve because we, we can take advantage of software like Excel Solver to 
uh, find the optimal solutions. And um, we round up this session's discussion finally with uh, uh, another more complex, more extended you know, use of various tricks and techniques that are found uh, only in binary decision uh, models uh, and how we can apply those tricks in mimicking or modeling actual real life constraints and situations. So with that, let's move on to uh, our first item of the day, and that is to pick up a bit of uh, terminologies involving integer programming models so that uh, when people talk about them, you understand uh, what is being talked about. So when we say that this is an all integer linear program, ILP, that means that all the decision variables, remember the decision variables, they are the x, y, z, right? The x1, x2, x3, where they have to be non negative, we recall from past sessions. Now, if they are all required to be integer, then not only that it is a linear programming model, but it is an all integer. The all refers to all the variables being integer. Okay, And if we have partial uh, set of the variables being required to be integer solutions, then it is a mix between uh, non-integer and integer decision variables. Yeah? So, so we are demanding that the, the optimal solution values to be integer. And then by, if you look at it, it becomes a constraint on the allowed values held by the decision variables. So uh, the, the, the one thing, the desire for the decision variables to have integer and optimal values is an additional constraint. Yeah, okay, so, so let's not think of uh, integer programming model as another class of mathematical problem is really not. It's just an additional, but you know, although it feels strange, but it's an additional constraint upon um, not a linear combination of the decision variables, but on the values permitted by the decision variables themselves. Yeah, okay. Now, if we are given either a mixed integer model or an all integer model, all right, but we temporarily drop all requirements for any variable to be integer and or binary, then that uh, modified model, let's call it, uh, is called the LP relaxation of the original model. So I like you to imagine that you're given a mixed integer model, all right, and you copy and paste, and for the portion of the constraints that require any uh, decision variable to be integer or binary, you remove that, right? So we copy and paste and we drop all requirements for any decision variable to be integer and or binary. Then that modified or that copied model is called the LP relaxation of the original model. So LP relaxation is really a noun and it refers to the modified version of the original model. Okay, why would we want to do that? Well, let's, uh, well, we'll see, right? So, but for now, let's just understand that's the copy and pasted and modified version. And finally, if the decision variables are not just required to be integer, but additionally, binary. So binary, when you say <clears throat> the decision variable has to be binary, automatically it is already integer. But if you need the decision variable to be integer, it of course does not have to be zero and one, it can do three, four, right? So binary programming model is strictly a subset of integer programming model. It is therefore required for the variable values, the outcomes to be either zero or one. Although this seems immensely restrictive, why would we want to know whether a variable is zero or one? But if we um, design the model properly, and correctly to reflect real life situations, the outcome is an optimal decision involving whether we should do or don't do, invest or don't invest, um, work or don't work, extend hours or don't extend hours. As you can see uh, and imagine that oftentimes when we ask ourselves, hmm, you know, should I go out or not go out? Should I watch a movie or not watch a movie? Should I uh, 
uh, study some more and forego my movie hours or not. So those are often, you know, binary in nature, yes, no answers. And because of this availability of this, this uh, mechanism, binary uh, constraint on the decision values, we avail ourselves a mathematically uh, supported model to help us make optimal decisions, not just a decision. 